China just rolled out two sixth-gen fighters. So is America falling behind? And can this upcoming black budget jet with years of secret flight hours actually transform U.S. air power in the Pacific? This is why the U.S. military is betting everything on the F-47 NGAD. Start with the why. In the Indo-Pacific, distance is the enemy. You don't get Europe's tight grid of friendly airfields. You get long stretches of water, tankers that are easy targets, and runways near the action sitting under layers of missiles, drones, and long-range guns. To matter out there, a fighter has to launch from far away, cruise fast without guzzling fuel, stay hidden like a submarine, and still coordinate a pack of drone wingmen while staying alive. The F-22 proved you can see first and shoot first. The F-47 pushes that logic across an entire ocean. In March 2025, the White House made it official. Boeing won the next generation air dominance contract, an engineering and manufacturing deal worth roughly $20 billion to start, with a planned fleet north of 185 jets. Air Force leadership didn't tease a paper airplane, they pointed to years of flying test articles and said you'll be surprised how soon you see hardware in the air. That confidence comes from a program that's farther along than people think. This wasn't whipped up last week. Back in 2014, the Air Force and DARPA kicked off the Aerospace Innovation Initiative and started flying X-planes to burn down risk. Full-scale test beds flew in 2019 and 2022, quietly shaking out shapes, engines, sensors, and software. Real flight hours, not slides, are why the program could jump from contract award to you'll see it sooner than you think. When Boeing talks about speed, it's because Phantom Works has been chewing through the hard problems while everyone else argued about what sixth gen even means. Then December 2024 happened. China rolled out two sixth-gen prototypes on a symbolic date and tried to set the pace. One airframe hinted at huge onboard power and unusual shaping. The other looked carrier-ready, with flashy thrust vector moves. Impressive clips, but a first flight isn't a combat squadron. That gap between a debut video and a force you can train, sustain, and fight is exactly where the F-47 has been working for years. By the time those videos trended, U.S. demonstrators had already logged hundreds of hours and pushed through the break-it, fix-it choices you only make in real testing. Those choices change what fighter means. The F-47 isn't built for daily 9G dogfights. It's built to shrink the time from spotted to solved. It carries sensors that paint the picture from far away, computers that fuse and rank what matters, and links that pass targets without shouting its location. The pilot runs a small team of autonomous wingmen, assigning shots and timing them so cleanly the other side reacts late every time. The shape tells the story. Losing vertical tails cuts radar return, but makes control tougher across the flight envelope. Early concept art showed canard-like surfaces and kicked off arguments, because they aren't the obvious stealth move. Maybe they're fixed lift helpers for narrow conditions. Maybe they tuck away. Either way, the point stands. The production jet is shaped for the mission, not airshow theatrics. Think all aspects stealth that fights radar and infrared. A broad, flat nose for serious sensors, internal weapons to keep the lines clean, and an outline meant to disappear, not pose. The biggest leap is inside. Adaptive cycle engines aren't buzzwords. They reroute airflow for efficiency on long legs and raw thrust when it's time to sprint. The headline gains are more push, more range, and more time on station. The quiet win is cooling. Extra thermal headroom means extra electrical power to run bigger sensors, stronger electronic warfare tools, and even sustained directed energy effects. That's Stealth Plus. Harder to see, able to see farther, better at jamming, and still packing the power to melt a drone or fool a missile seeker in an instant. Range is the other pillar. The F-47 can supercruise out past a 1,000 nautical mile combat radius, 
which flips basing and tanker plans on their head. You launch from safer airfields, refuel farther from threats, and still cover the key choke points without dragging a tanker everywhere. And because this jet runs a team, that extra reach keeps the quarterback on station to direct the fight, while unmanned wingmen rotate through the danger zones. Those wingmen are where the change is obvious. Loyal wingmen isn't hype anymore, it's standard. Think of a two-seat F-47, pilot up front, a mission systems officer in back commanding a small pack of drones. One scouts silently with passive sensors, Another carries long-range missiles and takes the shots the scout promotes. A third jams and deceives so enemy timing is always off. A fourth hauls bombs for air defenses or ground targets that need to disappear at the same moment. Tasks shift in milliseconds. The human calls the plan. The machines handle the fine moves. To the other side, it looks like a formation that's everywhere and nowhere at once. The weapons fit that playbook. A big internal bay keeps the jet clean while carrying variety and volume. Think long-range two-stage missiles with smart seekers built for a messy sky, plus munitions that can retarget mid-flight as the picture changes. Directed energy sits in the background as a tool, blind a seeker, burns a drone, or throws a fake heat signature at a missile at light speed. It's not about one magic round, it's about picking fast from a full menu and hitting from multiple angles, so defenses never solve just one problem. Electronic warfare is built in, not bolted on. Antennas and apertures spread across the airframe build a live 3D map of the electromagnetic world. That map drives when to jam, where to toss decoys, and how to hand off targets to other shooters. You don't just hide, you steer the fight. Missiles that need mid-course updates get fed lies. SAM sites switch modes and reveal themselves. Even enemy comms can be delayed or overwritten, so their coordination frays while yours tightens. None of it works without a factory that can keep up. Boeing sunk billions into St. Louis ahead of the win, wiring a digital thread from design to production to cut iteration time. Everything is modular, so hardware and software swap in without starting over. That's a fix for programs that took a generation to field and felt old on day one, and a hedge against real-world shocks when you can't wait 18 months for the next jet. Faster turns, more automation, and a broader supplier base are built in so the Air Force isn't stuck with one vendor or a single weak link. If the selection surprised people, the logic behind it didn't come out of thin air. Boeing needed a win in fighters. The Air Force needed more than one healthy prime capable of delivering frontline combat aircraft. Concentrating every stealth program under one roof makes you efficient right up until it makes you fragile. Spreading the work across Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman, fighters here, bombers there, the Navy's next jet on a parallel track keeps competition alive and keeps the bench deep. It also gives the government leverage on cost and schedule the next time a deadline starts to slip. Let's talk about money. Sixth Gen Tech isn't a bargain. At a few points, leaders hit pause and ask the obvious. If a crewed jet costs this much and drones keep getting smarter and cheaper, should we change things? One camp pushed for swarms only. Another said, buy more B-21s and let bombers launch long-range air-to-air shots. The F-47 lands in the middle, on purpose. Keep a human where judgment matters. Make the fighter the tough, survivable brain of the formation. And push danger out to unmanned teammates you can build fast and replace if you have to. That means a smaller fleet of premium crewed jets. Think hundreds, not thousands, backed by a large bench of CCAs that do the risky work. Now, why the confidence on schedule? The headline contract started around $20 billion, but the real story is how far along it already is. Full-scale test beds have been flying quietly for years to burn down risk. While that happened, the team lined up suppliers, trained a workforce, 
and wired the factory for digital production. So first flight isn't just a photo op. When Phantom Works hints you'll see hardware sooner than you think, they're pointing to a pile of flight hours that never made the news, not wishful thinking. Clear rolls make everything easier. The F-22 was built to own the sky and later picked up strike work because budgets and real life forced it. The F-47 is built flexibly from day one. Air dominance is still the mission, but it won't flinch at ground or maritime tasks. Load the bay right and it can lead an anti-ship hunt, lay smart mines, or knock out an air defense radar while its drones take the heat. It doesn't have to be everywhere, just lethal where it appears and tough to pin down. Then there's the human side. We're training crews to command a team of machines, not babysit every move. That's a culture shift as much as a tech upgrade. The Air Force is already practicing on surrogate jets, who assigns which task, when to let autonomy handle the small stuff, how to keep the formation deadly when the link gets noisy. You can't invent that playbook in a crisis. You field early, iterate fast, and let real squadrons show what works and what needs to change. Allies plug in fast. In Europe, the value is brains and jamming. One jet that builds a clean picture and reaches out with long-range effects makes every partner smarter and safer. In the Pacific, that reach stretches over blue water, from Australia to Japan, so friends get coverage without crowding the front line. Not everyone will fly the F-47. Export rules and sensitive tech keep the club small. But radios beat paint jobs. If the quarterback can read the field and share solid data, every shooter, on ships, in the air, or under the sea, hits harder. There's still real risk. Boeing's had cost spikes and schedule slips before, and this program can't stumble. There's no quick backup if timelines break. Congress is watching. The Pentagon has a long memory, and the Air Force can't afford a gap while rivals roll out farther shooting sensors and weapons. The upside? Nailing this would overhaul Boeing's reputation and set it up for the Navy's sixth-gen jet, aligning fleets, training, and logistics for the decade ahead. Here's a small clue in the name that shows how the Air Force thinks about tradition. F-47 tips its hat to a World War II legend and the year the modern Air Force was born. Some people even point out it matches the number in the Oval Office. Fun detail, but not the point. The point is continuity. This jet isn't a one-off. It follows a line from the P-51 to the F-15 to the Raptor, and now to a fighter that treats software, sensors, and drone teammates as just as important as raw thrust. That heritage shapes the culture, helps bring in new talent, and changes how crews feel when they walk to the jet at dawn. Now think of a mission. Two F-47s lift off from a base well outside the danger zone. They top off once, early, then settle into a fast, quiet cruise. In the back seat, the mission systems officer spins up the drone team. One scout listening silently, one carrying long-range shots, one ready to jam, another set to hit ground threats. Over open water, the cockpit screens light up, signals, data links, a ship's radar flicking on. Targets get tagged, priorities shift. A weapons drone gets the task and stays radio silent on the way in. Another unmanned teammate slides toward a coastal battery to blind it at the exact moment that matters. The F-47s never charge the threat ring. They don't have to. The bay doors crack open for seconds, effects go downrange, and both jets curve back toward a tanker that never had to loiter on the edge. That's the idea in plain terms. Survivability is not just stealth, it's distance, timing, and the ability to make your enemy solve too many problems at once. Lethality is not just missile count, it's putting the right warhead on the right track while everyone in your formation is hard to see and harder to predict. Sustainability is not just dollars per flight hour. It's a factory that can pivot, a software pipeline that can patch in days, and a supply chain that isn't a single point of failure.
the F-47 wraps those three into a shape that looks less like a knife fight and more like chess at speed. Here's the bottom line. This isn't about a flashy reveal. It's about a smart plan. The US is building a long-range ultra-stealth fighter that leads a pack of drones, bends the airwaves to its will, and has the power and cooling to run serious sensors and defenses. Behind it is a rebuilt factory system built to move fast, a training pipeline learning to fight alongside machines, and allies who need real reach, not slogans. And if a cheaper, tougher, more flexible way to deliver that punch shows up, they'll build that too. Until then, this is the machine that fits the math. A jet rolls, the horizon tilts, and a cockpit fills with a picture that didn't exist a second ago. Numbers turn into decisions, decisions turn into effects, and the formation slides away before anyone can put a clean label on it. That's not a trailer for a future concept. That's the kind of mission set the F-47 is being shaped to own. If clear, no-nonsense breakdowns like this help you make sense of what's next in air warfare, hit subscribe so you don't miss the next deep dive.